And so there I began to have that idea. And in college, I majored in philosophy. My parents thought there was a death in the family when I did that. I said, oh, Fred, uh, wh why not, if not engineering, why not at least business or, or something that will, or, or education, get a certificate so you can teach. And that reflects, I suppose, the depression, shock, and horror that many parents of people our age experienced. And they just don't want their children to have to go through all of that with no security, no money, no prospects, and so forth. Um, so I, I uh, majored in philosophy. But I majored in it partly because there was no opportunity to major in religion. I was at a public institution, College of William and Mary, where there was no religion department. And there wasn't in most public institutions of higher education in, in the middle 50s. Not until the 60s do we have that beginning. Places like Santa Barbara and Virginia and others, and William and Mary as well. And so I skewed it so with the help of a couple of good advisors so that I could read William James and I could read um, mysticism texts. I could read um, Pseudo Dionysus. And uh, so I did that and began to study the Bible as literature, for example, in the English department, uh, medieval art. I was very interested in that, particularly the, uh, the whole Gothic uh, art and architecture uh, period. And I read a remarkable book by Etienne Gilson on medieval philosophy, Reason and Revelation in the Middle Ages. And that opened up a whole new world for me because I read it in the context of a course in medieval philosophy where we're studying universals and um, the, uh, the peripatetic tradition as well as the platonic tradition and Aquinas particularly. And I came across all of these references to Arab people, writers, and Jewish people. And I thought, gee, why are, because of my provincialism, why are all these non-Christians in the footnotes and so forth? And I went to my instructor and I said, who are these people? And he said, well, those are the Arabs and some Jews, like Maimonides and so forth. And a lot of these people were not quoted by Aquinas, but they're referenced by the editors because of the discourse that Aquinas is in the middle of, of reason and revelation, nature and grace. And I said, well, why aren't we reading them? Good question. <laughs> we should be. <laughs> That's why we're reading Gilles Song, because he tells us a little bit about them. And I thought, well, gee, I'd love to read these people, but I didn't realize that they had so much uh, influence on Western theological thought. And indeed they do. And that's when I began to be interested in Islam. But it was for the study of philosophy and philosophy of religion or philosophical theology. At about the time that I discovered Gilles Saint through him the um, Greek tradition that had come up in, through places like Spain into the Christian West, I read parts of the Quran and began to be engaged by that parallel scripture to the Bible, which I was coming to know as well. And I was quite surprised and pleased and uh, a bit troubled that I had never been taught this before. And I thought, well, here's something that's so close yet so far. So I began to be interested in that.